The Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Samuel was raised by Eli in the temple at Shiloh. He was the son of Elkanah and Hannah, who was said to have been barren. When Samuel was about 12, Eli had become an old man with failing eyesight, among other things. While asleep one night, Samuel heard his name called three separate times, as we heard in the reading. Each time his name was called, he went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. Eli had not called Samuel and told him to go back and lie down. The final time Eli suspected that the voice was the Lord's. He told Samuel to go lie down and if it happened again, say, speak Lord, for your servant is listening. There is an inclination in the prayer life of Christians to spend more time saying, listen to me, Lord, for I am speaking, then speak to me, Lord, for I am listening. Have you been praying only in that way? It has certainly happened to me. It is not that we intend to pray only in that way, but it is easy to fall into that manner of prayer. There are many forms of prayer, including adoration, praise, thanksgiving, penitence, oblation, intercession, and petition. In the prayer book, oblation is identified as offering myself, my life, and labor for God's purposes. That's what Samuel was doing, offering himself, his life, and labor to the Lord. For the most part, God does not speak directly to any one of us. We don't get a text or a phone call from God. God speaks to us in other ways, and most often we must piece together those events to realize God is speaking to us. Allow me to share a part of my journey. My call to be a deacon occurred after a two week stint of uneasiness, during which time I had an awareness that something was going on, but I couldn't identify it. It was in the stillness of a winter afternoon that I realized God was telling me that my next work was diaconal ministry. Al and I often say, I had a slam dunk from the Holy Spirit. But a nudge from God created a new vocation of servanthood for me. I had listened to God. What about you? Have you heard the Lord speaking? 
Have you answered God's call to do something different or to make a change in your life? Have you felt the nudge? The psalmist writes, Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I was marvelously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. Your eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. They were fashioned day by day, when as yet there was none of them. The psalmist is speaking of the inescapable presence of God, as well as God's intimate knowledge of us. God has a life plan for each one of us. Are you listening to, God, listening to God's plan for you? God's plan for each of, us, each of us is not always what we plan. My original plan was to always work as a nurse in cardiology, but I was led to home health and finally to hospice care. It was during my work in hospice that God's call to the diaconate was finally realized by me. I believe then and I believe now that God had always called me to the diaconal ministry, even when I was being knitted in my mother's womb. God wanted me to experience service to others through my various professions and work. God nudged and I merged nursing with the diaconate. In what ways is God calling you as individual believers and as communities of faith to offer yourselves, your lives and labors in union with Christ for God's work? The time has come for me to leave you as your deacon. I believe the Holy Spirit is leading me to find other ways to continue my ministry. This is not a sad occasion where we can look back and honor the work we've done together. Just as you have walked with me, I have walked with you. Together we have experienced so much, joy and sadness, darkness and light. But always God has been inescapably present to all of us. Thank you for allowing me to serve you. May God bless you, your work, and your listening. Amen.